Hi guys, I'm glad you're all here with me today. I hope you're enjoying your day. There's been nine earthquakes within the last week. They just recently changed it to eight along the new Madrid Fault Zone. Two today, a magnitude 2.6 and a 2.3. USGS doesn't list them as the new Madrid Seismic Zone, but as in Arkansas, Tennessee, Missouri, um, and these are the most recent that they're showing right now. Going to Google Earth, here's the location of the most recent 2.6 earthquake. Two people said they did feel it. And what I noticed recently with these earthquakes, let me pull it up, this line of earthquakes, which very well could be either on the real foot, foot fault zone or the Cottonwood Grove Fault, which actually extends all the way up here, both of them do, uh, to Real Foot Lake. USGS claims that all these earthquakes are aftershocks from the 1811-1812 earthquake. Well, I have my doubts. This area is a location of a failed rift zone where the United States was going to originally split apart and open up for access to the ocean going all the way down here to the Gulf of Mexico. There wasn't a lot of people in this location back then. There was a cattleman who quickly bought up land, um, yeah, on the cheap when a lot of the uh, early settlers decided to move out and head west. They had enough of the earthquakes. Because of the amount of land that he bought up, he became known as the Tsar of the Valley. And because of his influence, when Missouri became a state, he petitioned and won that this area remain part of Missouri. Another interesting fact, a lot of people believe that comets uh, foretell bad things to come. Consider an omen. Well, there was a comet that was observed uh, from March 25th, 1811, all the way through the following year to 1812. So great was this astronomical, unusual event that paintings were created, products were created. The tail of it was wider than the size of the sun. No, it was not hail bop. I don't know what comet it was. Evidently, I believe it makes an orbit of every 2,000 plus years. According to a 2010 census, if an earthquake that occurred, or earthquakes, because there was multiple earthquakes in 1811, 1812, but if that event happened again today, over 7 million people would become homeless. The city of Cincinnati there in Ohio at the time of the earth, this earthquake only had about 5,000 people. Most of the damage was fallen chimneys. There was some structural damage, some buildings that fell. And three years later, after the 1811-1812 earthquake, government was slow to help people back then, just as they are now. But William Clark of Lewis and Clark, the explorers, convinced Congress three years later with the signing of the bill of the United States first ever disaster relief act which basically gave land to the farmers and ranchers who lost land because of the earthquake which valued to um, about fifty thousand dollars so what they did was give the land to the people who lost their land who probably was still there <laughs> but this one fella, yeah, he had probably already bought much of it up. And the people had left and moved west. Dozens of people were killed during the earthquake. Great crevices opened up and then closed up. Uh, water, sand boils were shooting up in the air. In fact, the largest sand boil in the world is here along the new Madrid fault zone. 
It evidently is located close to Hayti, Missouri. It is uh, 1.4 miles long, the blowhole, and covers over 136 acres. It's about four miles west, according to reports, um, of Hayti, Missouri. These lighter areas, these are ancient blowholes that occurred uh, during the 1811, 1812 earthquakes. There was evidently over 2,000 earthquakes in a matter of just five months aftershocks. People during that time were describing lights flashing from the ground. That was caused by the crystals being squeezed from the earthquakes called semi-luminescence. So besides that, and when the Great Comet, yeah, there was a lot of weird stuff going on. Prior to the earthquakes, animals were acting very strange. Deer were wandering up to people's houses. Dogs were barking for no reason at all. Geese were landing in areas right next to people, probably because of magnetic anomalies that were occurring prior, prior to the earthquake. So if they had 7 million homeless people as of 2010, if an earthquake such as what happened back then, can you imagine how many people would probably die? How many bridges would be out? How much infrastructure would be devastated for decades to come afterwards? Decades. It would take decades to recover. And more than likely, there would be a mass migration of people just leaving. It would affect commerce. It would affect the uh, gas and oil lines. Uh, the bridges would be out, so I don't know how they would transport goods from east to west. It could trigger uh, mass electrical outlets, both east and west, as uh, the electrical grid went down. Insurance companies would definitely go broke so people wouldn't get the money for recovery. So what are your thoughts? Please put those comments down below. Thank you very much for watching, taking your time to watch my videos. Thank you very much for your support. Please stay safe. Always be prepared for a disaster. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.